Thanks. Um, Deb made an interesting comment where she said that the NYC basically incorporates everything that we touch. I think the two glaring omissions in Plan YC are education and technology. Mm. And you both talked about communication, engagement, and these are all things that happen through education, through technology, either as a means or as an end. And you know, the mayor's done some things to you know attract technology industry to the city or good or bad things depending on your opinion in terms of education. But I'm just wondering in your work whether you think that omission is okay, does it need to be explicit, are you finding ways to get around that, or maybe the city's not focusing on it, just what are your thoughts on education and technology in general? Well, well I think, I guess, first of all, I think that that, that is part of their mission, but I, I, I just think we didn't make the list exhaustive, but I think the education priority, for instance, um, on the level of bringing the, the uh, Stanford over to the uh, uh, tech campus, uh, that was such a huge thing to do large commitment, a lot of dollars. Um, I think that that's going to set a tone for New York getting more technology. And I would say that the reason that we gained those jobs is really the financial sector lost some jobs, not a lot, not, not as much as we thought. But, but we gained so many tech jobs. The universities were, were phenomenally expanding the universities and built, rebuilding them. We've got the law school at Ford, and we've got all kinds of phenomenal building by MIT and Columbia. Um, so I think we're, we're really getting there on that. And also the, the public school system, really we're starting to really, really fight to make it a better system. Now whether that's had a lot of bumps in the road for those who are teachers, I have a number of people that, that would resist that comment. But I think that we're starting to really think seriously. Nobody thought that the mayor could take over the board of ed and have that be essentially under city control. And they said, don't go there, it's not going to happen. He went there, he did smoking in that the same year. But, um, I think, I think education and technology is, is the key. I think the reason that young people, you know that, that something like 50% of kids, young people, who are under 25, express an interest in being in New York. 50%, that's, that's amazing. So people want to be here. Now whether they can afford to be here, because it's too expensive, and then that gets a housing issue. But I think that we, we really have become a, um, uh, an area that is, has the architects, has the professionals, has, has educators, and it's become people that really are more accessible to, to talking about these things and actually doing something about it. The, the trouble with that is they're very independent. Lawyers and educators and so on, they really think how they're going to think. So can we get through to them on, a, on, a, on an intellectual level, on a social level? And obviously I think maybe where you're going is also social media. I, I think it's phenomenal how much social media is about getting points across. It's done efficiently and it's done, uh, you look at, look at how people communicate in the corporate world or the political world, it's all done by social media. So I think that, that's, that maybe that's how, what, what do you think? Do you think social media has, has a place in, in the arts? Is I don't think it's separate from the arts at this point. It's, 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 it's totally part of it. You know, here I am, a, the old school person who, you know, can barely get the thing to work and I'm totally I have a very young staff though so <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm totally interested in uh, social media and the media, pla the media platform we're working on and I think it's uh, really uh, extremely interesting I think that there are I you're, you could go to groups and find many criticisms about plan we have to see I don't think it's uh, comprehensive but I think it's hitting major points I know Eric Sanderson insisted that we include life able to take in people and that, you know, animals, animals and animals. education and, and all, all of those things. Uh, but to have to have a blueprint that covers as much as it does is really uh, an amazing and wonderful thing for us. You need the infrastructure to have large universities to have uh, good education, have technology. Why do these why do these um, companies, Google and whoever, why do they want to come to New York? Because we're, we're really getting there. We're, you know what we are? We're, we're a business that almost went out of business in the 1970s. We almost went bankrupt. And now we're growing back. We're, we're doing good. And we're going to get a million people in population. And what is that to your business? That's profit margin. Those million people, you do it right, you make the city's tax base stronger. The city can have more money to spend on infrastructure and education. So I think, I think we're at that point. Um, but I think we've got to find a way to reach people um, need I say under 25, because they're the ones that are going to be, between now and 2030, those are the people that are going to be running the city. So 
So uh, can we get to the question here?
80,000 emails. I mean, probably would have said the same thing. That'd be good. That'd be like a, you know, a campaign. But I think, I think getting compelling, intelligent arguments in front of officials, at least in this day and age in New York City, is a, is a really good idea. Uh, and it's amazing how, how few people, though, do get to, to, do, to actually do that. So when you do it, it stands way out. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was I was the mic. My name is Sarah from Benadonga MT. Mary, you're talking about, um, you mentioned the notion of hubs uh, along the way. And um, I wanted to ask you to what extent you see these hubs as physical spaces. Um, because a lot of the work that we, um, that our is involved in, is creating these physical hubs in a community and creating exhibitions in in that space as a, as a response to site and, and the whole surrounding area of the community. And if you had a physical hub, sort of, that you, if you could imagine a whole series of physical exhibitions going along the length of Broadway, each dealing with its own site, like sort of com uh, bringing together the common themes of, of, of the project. Uh, but then each one being locally specific and bringing in all the, the, the neighborhood schools, the bids, creating tourism along to Broadway because everybody is coming in to see these exhibitions. Because I think everybody that's brought together by a blade of grass believes that in the power of art to affect social change and how we get to the public, you know, create the imagination which artists preeminently do. That, that physicality of each space would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's the whole idea that we're we're just trying to do a mapping initiative with this first phase, and what we'd really love to see are things, temporary projects, permanent projects, conceptual works, uh, performances happening along this corridor and responding to the specifics of each of these locations. So you, what you need is a huge collaboration among the yes. That's That's why we're hoping this network will be established. Yeah. How, how, how about, there's, I know in, 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 I've read pieces on this, how about the uh, use of sidewalk sheds to the minor trust? Do you know we have all these, these um, scaffolding things that stay for years? Mm -hmm. It would seem to me that there's something creative to do with that. Listen. Let me, let me add, <laughs> let me add. Uh, you know, this is, uh, there. I, I, something that personally is really interesting to me is repurposing things in the city. That's like uh, when we uh, were doing the uh, project down at the Mifuchi and Socrates, I just loved the idea, couldn't convince them to take the uh, stacks of the Big Alice uh, power plant and turn them into barometers where you can see how how's the air quality today? How are you, how are we doing in handling our waste? And you can see them from all over the they, city. They would love that. <laughs> but that's for some reason they were not on this. Uh, but, but this is actually going back to this idea where I'm, you know, it's Cornell who won the contract, not Stanford, fortunately. Or oh gosh, I'm sorry, Miss Kate. Uh, I'm brainwashed. One of, one of my lawyers is from Stanford. And he, he <laughs> well, you know, there's going to be this research district there on uh, on that island, on Roosevelt Island, and so we think it's a great idea to do an arts research district just across around Socrates and uh, Noguchi, because the trouble with trying to repurpose those sheds, those that are all over the city. You know, I'm sure artists could come up with really interesting things to do. You know, I was saying, boy, we could do all these green walls, you know, converting the, but many people could come up with ideas. But the city is so low to do anything that they're not convinced to say. So we need this, uh, yeah, yeah, but we need a place to test the ideas and show the powers that, that be that nobody's going to get killed or nobody's you know, going to work. <laughs> so. How about bus shelters? Yeah, bus shelters. Bus shelters. Yeah. The same. Yeah, the two questions. Two more we questions. Have There's questions. one in the back. Uh, I have a question. I have a couple of comments. Uh, you talk about the, how business have helped the city and I'm thinking about the South Bronx and how it was actually the people, the people, not the business who saved the South Bronx. It was the individuals who stayed there and went through the fires and through the destruction. When the city left, the borough collapsed. And uh, with that said, I'm very happy to see that, you know, every time I wake up, there's a new tree planted. And uh, I'm gonna piggyback on your comment, how is the city assessing um, 
all this information about like trying to work with the environment and with environmental issues in terms of racism, classism, and how, I mean, I'm not a, an environmentalist, but I have been able to see all the inequality that the beautifying of the Bronx is it's revealing. All the inequality, the fact that we don't have garbage cans, they were born in the Bronx like Manhattan does, therefore people throw their garbage bags on the sidewalk, and therefore the garbage bags end up in the gardens that are planted by Plan NYC. And those gardens are not maintained at the same pace that the gardens in Manhattan. And uh, I would also like to commend uh, Mary Means for the work we're doing. And I think it would be great if you come to a place like the Grand Concourse, one of the most beautiful streets thoroughfare in the city. Thank you so much. Um, part, part of what um, you're talking about, though, is environmental justice. So uh, we, we cite power plants and put wastewater plants in neighborhoods that can be supportive. So that, that's something that, that, that it's in, the, it's in the plan, and if anybody heard of the MTCR, Community Partners for Community Re Revitalization, what that is is taking disadvantaged neighborhoods and, and putting funding in and brownfields opportunities. It's a fabulous program, and it's really taking hold in parts of Brooklyn, and really is, is something that's been contemplated by the Office of Environmental Remediation. But that's something we've got to stop citing things in just dumping in a neighborhood that doesn't have a voice, such as sometimes. But I, I also want to add that when we talk about doing this corridor of Broadway, uh, we're trying to, talking about trying to come up with ideas that see the rest of the city. First of all, every borough in Manhattan has a Broadway, so we can you know, move out to those other Broadways after this one. But the idea is that people be able to come someplace and see, oh, here's a new, new way to do porous paving that uh, does something really good to the neighborhood. Here's a way to do composting that you don't get rats uh, infesting the place. Uh, they can be very small things to, you know, how you can start getting uh, farms on more rooftops uh, in neighborhoods. Um, so I think as we talk about this, it's not just to stop once you've got the corridor done. It's really as a way to make a place where people can know that they can come to see new ideas. And I think that the question there is, um, can we get commitments at a level of, of a business approved district, or, or as we're talking about the Bronx here, uh, will, will the citizens come together and help that happen um, with, with some help from the private sector, with some help from government? It, it seems like it's something that really just makes absolute sense. Uh, but I, I do worry about maintaining it. So like the trees, the same as the trees. How do you keep that up? Now the city, like I was saying, is going to become very profitable. Between now and 2030, it's going to get a million people. A lot of taxpayers there. So we have funding to do things, but we've got to map it out. So somebody, when the next mayor takes office, has to have a, a to-do list like Plan YC. What do we want to do with that to educate people? Because it makes sense. Okay, last question. Hi, my name is Columbia Fiero, and um, I did a lot of work with um, the Project to Save Washington Square Park. And this talk of planting all these trees, um, I really feel frightened about the city's effort to maintain and uh, the stewardship of the trees because the um, I, I as the video, you know, the person who did the videos and, and, and interviewed the um, tree people, the people who are um, take maintain trees and um, who know trees, they said you cut down the old trees, the ancient trees, and the, tree, the city cut down huge trees and put up these little trees and then they count, they put up all, oh, they put up 25 trees, 100 trees, and they have them die. They don't maintain, they don't restore it, and the little trees have a very hard chance to survive. And they cut down big trees, and not only that, all those little um, three foot, uh, two foot fences, borders they put on to maintain the people who come in to meet and talk, to break up community meeting spaces, um, cut into the toes and feet of the trees. Because the feet and the toes of the trees, they die. So there's been a lot of death there with that too. So then they climb these little trees and, and say, they, oh, they're replacing trees. 
And then um, knowing that it has happened up in the Bronx, because and it's all over the city now, I understand with the community spaces, that they're selling not your housing spaces. There's a, a park space in the Bronx that they have built a charter school, they're putting charter schools all over the place. And the judge on the case, and I know this because my partner is an environmental justice lawyer. Can I just ask a um, he just said, um, they say trees, we don't need those trees. So what do we do as citizens, as people here, as artists, to be vigilant about taking care of the trees? I, I really think it goes back to the advocacy. This, this gathering evidence, pictures, or a write up that, that deals with that and getting some tree experts to get to the city. If you do that, the city will listen. It has to be, because they, they need to devote a lot of money to that. That's the bottom line. We did a lot of work, and the city um, wants more. Okay. Anything to add here? Can I have the last word? Um, I think there's a potential great project uh, in the problem. That's actually a great place to end it. Yeah. 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 Problems are projects, right? Yeah. That's kind of where, that's, that's what artists bring to the table, right? I want to thank everybody for, I have a couple of things to say. Hold your fire. <laughs> I, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. This has been a really, really stimulating conversation. Please join our mailing list. We have conversations like this on a regular basis come back, right? Uh, our, next our next event is a week from today. It's totally different. It's, uh, it's a new series that we're doing that we're really excited about uh, by artists, for artists. It's called Fucking Up. It's, um, <laughs> it's um, uh, moderated by Caroline Wooler from Our Goods. And uh, the artists that we're talking with are Carrie Downey, Christopher Robbins, and Juan Go. Yes. I got it. Uh, so, and, and you know, the other thing is that this conversation uh, can continue. It can continue here in this space. Please stay, have a glass of wine. And the other thing is that it can keep continuing on Twitter and Facebook. We love those things. Like us and follow us and talk to us and ask questions. And, and, and we'll talk back. So thank you for coming tonight. Have